Okay, so the next couple of traps we've got are, hang, are ones that we can hang up. So the first one is, is a vein trap. Now, this is actually, again, a pollinator trap. It's similar to um, the, 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 yellow pan, the yellow traps, but the vein traps have these veins. So you can see here, this one's got a yellow one and a blue one. They can either be all yellow or all blue. And what they have underneath in here is then it's the funnel. So the, the pollinators will hit the vein, fall in, fall through the, the, um, the funnel, and then in, into the container. Now this can be used dry, or it can be used with a preservative. The ones when they're used dry are really useful if you are actually trying to find um, the pollinators and also the pollen that they're moving. So if you dry traps, can you can get the pollinators off the the legs or off the bodies or the hairs of the the pollinators and then actually put the pollen the pollen on a slide. If you collect them wet, again you can put them into ethanol or you can put them into a salt solution um, so that they can be collected and then identified. The insects can be identified further back in the lab. These ones. These are quite not the easiest ones to find in Australia because they're mainly only manufactured in the US at the moment. But they are quite neat because they do have the, the, um, the veins there to actually use them that way. Another method that is used quite often, particularly in also in uh, glass houses to, to try and reduce flying insects are the, the sticky traps. So you can see here we've got actually, we've got actually got a little hoverfly on there as well and a few other insects. This has only been out for a few minutes. But these can go out, yeah, just to see what insects are attracted to um, yellow. They're, they're useful in the sense that they do collect things relatively easily. The problem is that they are sticky and if you, they're very difficult to identify insects or collect them off. Once the insects are on there, on the sticky substance, they, um, they can't, they're really difficult to get off and actually um, extract. So it's like a, it's what's called tangle foot. Um, the actual substance on there, very sticky and not very easy to manipulate but it does mean the insects can't go any once they're stuck on there. And they're really useful, they're used quite a lot in glass houses to control uh, insects like aphids, flying aphids for example, um, and it can be useful in that sense. The next three traps we're using are pheromone traps. Now this one is a um, delta trap, so it's for cobbling moths. And you can see in here, it's the, the triangle of the red. This is also, this is a sticky trap that we haven't um, extracted, taken the, um, the covers off yet. But this will actually fit inside the trap here. And they use it for, with pheromone lures. So a pheromone is put in the middle of the trap there. It's usually, it's a female sex pheromone. So it's used to attract the male. Oops. And um, <laughs> so, So yeah, the, um, the, the pheromone actually is uh, a female sex pheromone to attract the males. It, it can work for um, up to a few kilometres away because it's very species specific. So these ones are usually put in orchards and they're usually not here to actually control um, the, the, um, the cobbling moth, but to identify if there's a certain number. So if you reach an economic threshold, then you have to make a management decision. So if you find five or so um, males cobbling moths in these traps and you have these spread across an orchard and they're mul all finding multiple numbers that might be an indication that you need to make management decisions either to spray um, a specific pesticide or even bring in natural enemies to control the, um, the cobbling moth. Another um, pheromone trap are these ones, these are agrisense traps. These are made for control or for managing helicoverpa, particularly um, in in um, uh, cotton crops. These are actually originated from UNE and produced by um, Peter Gregg, who's now an emeritus professor at UNE. Um, they've actually got the, the pheromone lure. There's actually a little um, piece of card in there and you can see it's just on the paper clip. And you can see that's a, a classic um, yeah, sort of academics um, pheromone trap with, the, with the, the paper clip there. But in here, so again, it's got the, the, the funnel so the insects go towards the, um, the pheromone, they hit the funnel and they go into it and then they go into the base of the, the trap here. And again, the numbers of insects that are collected then indicates what sort of management 
um, conditions will be taken. And the final one we've got up here are ones that you're probably a bit more familiar with, particularly if you've got, um, you know, if you've got uh, fruit trees in your backyard. These are fruit fly traps. So this again has a pheromone in here. So it's a specific fruit fly, um, fruit fly pheromone um, to attract males. So the males go through the little holes here and this also has an insecticide built into it. So the, the insects go into the, the chamber and then they're, once they're in there, the concentration gets high, then they, they're actually killed. Then you can come back and monitor these daily to see what the number of male fruit flies are. Again, they're all indications of male fruit flies, but it's the female insects that do all the damage. So the female fruit fly is the one that stings the fruit and actually lays the egg into it. And the, then the, la the egg produces the larvae and the larvae is what actually causes the damage inside the fruit. So it's an indication of sample size, but not actually an exact indication if there's actually damage occurring. So you do have to be aware of that when you're using pheromone traps.